welcome to episode two of the Ruby and Roses podcast. My name is Addison and I'm the creator behind Ruby and Roses Yarn. You can find my yarn on Etsy and I am Ruby and Roses Yarn on Instagram as well, where you can follow along with all of the yarn that I'm dyeing and all of the making that I'm doing I normally post on Instagram. So thank you so much for joining to me today. If you are a returning viewer, thank you. And if you are new to this podcast, then welcome. This is a podcast about knitting, spinning, crocheting, yarn dyeing, needle felting, all of the fiber arts. I, I, I love them all. <laughs> so I just thought I would jump right in by saying a huge thank you. I am just so overwhelmed by all the positive feedback I've gotten for this. It has just blown me away. So thank you for all of the comments. I've read every one and I just hold them so special to my heart. It's just so sweet that you guys have loved it so much. I mean, that makes me so happy because I had so much fun filming the first one and I can't wait to continue doing more. So I am just so blown away by how I have like already a thousand subscribers and I've only had one other episode. So just thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I feel like I've got a lot of um, comments about people asking me how I learned to knit and crochet and just how I've how I've arrived at where I am now and if anyone in my family knits and if I could just talk about my knitting history and, and also involving um, my family history. So I thought that was where I would start today. So I'm going to give you a little tour, for lack of a better word, of all the things that I've done and sort of what has helped me along with my journey and hopefully you can draw um, something out of that if you are looking for help with something that you are doing. So I will just jump right in. So none of my family knits. <laughs> so my great grandma, her name was Ruby, and um, so so she um, was a, an amazing painter. She had an amazing teacher, and I just love all of her paintings. But that was her craft. So she didn't knit or anything. Um, and my grandma only knit two sweaters before my mom was born, and then I think she just got burnt out. So she hasn't really knit at all. So it's just been, um, it's just just been me. I just love knitting. So I've learned how to um, how to do everything through YouTube and just through um, like um, just through. I learned how to spin through a person that I met. Um, in St. Genevieve, which is a just really old, old town that I will just get into a little later, but it's mostly just been me teaching myself, which that's a, that's like my favorite way to learn. You can just learn at your own pace and just be your own teacher, and it's really fun. You can't do that with everything, obviously, but it's just, I just really like doing that. So I learned how to crochet at eight years old, and so I would always hang out with these two friends of mine, and one of them, one time she brought some, um, she brought some yarn and a crochet hook, and she was just chaining, and I thought that was so cool, and I really wished that um, I could learn how to do that. So that day she taught me how to do a crochet chain, and I just loved it, and I was just doing it constantly. <laughs> and then my mom saw me, and she was like, oh, well, that's part of a crochet stitch. And I was like, really, what's crochet? And she goes, you know, you can make actual fabric instead of just like a strand. So I thought that was so cool. So my mom is one of those people that doesn't sit down hardly at all. She's always doing something, always super busy. Like, it's just really funny. I always kid and say she gave me a five minute lesson because that was what she does. So it was, it was really funny. So she just did, she taught me how to do double crochet. And I loved it so much that I just kept doing all of, tons of double crochet and then I went on YouTube and I looked how to do single crochet and all the other stitches and that sort of really helped my help broaden my horizons so I really loved teaching myself how to crochet and it just was such a meditative and fun thing to do and I also really loved um, making things and selling them to my friends and family and then I eventually went to a farmers market in my local town and started selling like washcloths that's what I love to make the most and I, and since I was a complete list person, and I still am, I have a list for absolutely everything. And even at that age, I kept a record of how many washcloths I made and I sold. And so I actually just found that the other day and I sold a total of like 500 washcloths. So that's a ton. And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> so as a result of that, I actually, I actually like ruined my wrist. So I can't crochet anymore, but at least I can knit. So that's, that's good, but it's really sad that I can't crochet anymore, so that's okay. <laughs> I still, I'm so glad that I can knit and that it uses different muscles, and yeah, 
So after I learned how to crochet, I made mostly washcloths, and then I wanted to do something different, something a little bit harder, and I found on YouTube that people were making amigurumi animals. So it's basically like a crocheted stuffed animal. So I was doing that, and I found a couple of free patterns and just watched some videos, and I just fell in love with making those. <laughs> so I made a lot of stuffed animals, and I have some to show you because these didn't sell, and looking back, I'm so glad they didn't because they will be perfect for when I grow up and I have kids. I feel like these will just be really fun things that they can play with, and I'm really happy that I have, that I saved some, so I will show you. So the very first thing I made, I was trying to make a dress for one of my dolls at the time and I lost, I just lost it. I don't know where it is, but it was basically, I was trying to do like a square and then just sew it up like a skirt and it turned out to be a triangle, which I feel like that's pretty standard for everyone's first project, but I still loved it and I used it all growing up, but it's, it's just disappeared. So I don't know where it is. I might find it one day, but I do have the very, the second thing that I crocheted and I still remember crocheting this. <laughs> I have a really good memory, which is really funny because like my mom's always saying like, how do you remember that? <laughs> so it's just really funny. So I will show you the very, the second thing that I made. So here it is. This was a stuffed animal that I just, I really loved <laughs> and I made a little cape for it and I made a hat. So, <laughs> um, I think, I think it's really, it was, it was so much fun to make at the time, and I really loved playing with it. So it was just regular, um, cotton that I got at, like, Hobby Lobby or something, and I wanted to attach it, and so I used tape. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, I used tape, and it's funny. It is still there. I didn't take it off. <laughs> So yeah, that was the very first, this very second thing that I made. So now I sort of got sidetracked, but it was in my stuffed animal pile, so I just decided to show it anyways. So uh, these stuffed animals that I made crocheting with amigurumi, these are what they look like. So my favorite one was a pig, <laughs> just because it was so adorable and it was one of the bigger ones, but I made, um, I made pigs, elephants, rabbits, pandas, raccoons, beavers, foxes. There was um, a lady, and she just designed tons of different, um, tons of different patterns, and I don't, I don't know if I remember all of, all of the ones that I did, but um, it was quite a few, and I just loved her patterns. So I don't remember her name or where I found her, but I'm sure if you just look up on Google um, Amigurumi patterns, I'm sure something would come up. But it was so long ago, I really don't remember what I did. So without further ado, I will show my favorite one. <laughs> Here it is. It's an adorable little pig, and I named her Charlotte. I still remember that. That was one of my favorite names. <laughs> um, it's not anymore. I still like it, but my favorite name is Ruby, and when I have a little girl one day, I really want to name her Ruby <laughs> as a side note. So, okay, so this is Charlotte, and I made her a little dress. Isn't she so cute? <laughs> And then I have quite a few pigs because I made quite a few, but no one really liked it. And I was like, that's really funny because they were my favorite. But like I said, I'm really glad they didn't sell now because now I get to have them for my kids. And this one I named Lulu. And I think that was just because I couldn't, um, I couldn't remember. I couldn't think of another name to name her. <laughs> and I liked that name at the time, which is really funny. I definitely don't like that name now. <laughs> but, um, and then I had, and then I have a little boy. And... His name was Teddy. I know his, this, this, his nose was just <laughs> really wonky, but I think he's still pretty cute. Made a little vest for him. And then I made a lot of elephants. My elephants were probably the most popular one, and the raccoons. The raccoons were really cool because they had like a felt patch for their eyes, like the, um, for like around their eyes, and it was just really cool. The tons of different shades of gray and black and white, so it's just really cool. So here's what my elephants look like. And since I was um, selling them, I didn't give these ones names. So they're just really, really, really cute. I still, I don't know, I feel like they would be fun to make even now. <laughs> like something, just to change it up a bit, but. I have another little elephant and another gray. I just love their little mouths. <laughs> so yeah, so I made 
quite a few animals and then I made a lot of cows and I sold them and my mom bought this one <laughs> and she has it like in her room it's really funny I'm like mom you should put that away <laughs> it doesn't really look good because I just I made a lot of mistakes on it but she thinks it's got a wobbly head really cute little tail so yeah so yeah, those were the animals that I made, the ones that I have that didn't sell, but those were just really fun to make. So moving on. So when I was 10 years old, I learned, I taught myself how to knit. So that was so much fun. I just love knitting. And I don't remember what my very first knitting project was, but I'm pretty sure it was making those um, scarves that were really popular. And, um, and I don't remember, I don't remember what the name was, but I think it was like sachet yarn or something like that it was like basically a net and you would just stick your needle through one of the holes like five like an inch away or something so I I don't know you some of you might know what I'm talking about they're really popular like several years ago but um I made tons of those so that was basically how I learned to knit on and then after that after I made a lot of those and sold those I went on to making hats <laughs> and a really funny story is I looked up on YouTube how to make a hat and it was a um this lady, she was speaking Spanish, and so I just saw what she was doing, and she had um, captions. I had captions on it so I could see, like, what the actual pattern was. And I was apparently using really large, large needles, and so I found out later she was knitting it for a child size, and it turned out to be an adult hat, so I just lucked out. <laughs> but that was, like, the first real thing I knit using, like, actual yarn. So that was really fun, and then I just sort of went on from there I started watching a lot of YouTube podcasts and I just loved that and the ones that I started with I still watch and I still love them and so that was really fun so like the podcast that I would watch would be um, Meanwhile at the Castle then two sisters that podcast and I love it so much and then I would watch Legacy Fiber Arts it's a mother and daughter team and I just thought it was so cool <laughs> and I still love them and then I would also um, watch Molly of a homespun house. I've always watched her podcast and I've always enjoyed it so much. She is just like, I feel like she's so much like me, but it's just so cool to just, we're so similar, I feel like in a lot of ways. So that's really cool. And then I watched a couple more, but I can't, oh, the Yarn Hoarder podcast. <laughs> I loved her, Amber, and I still watch her podcast. She is just like a speed knitter and she just knits tons of things. It's amazing. I don't know how she gets it all done. So yeah, so after I was doing that, I was watching podcasts, and one of the sisters of Meanwhile at the Castle at that time was a yarn dyer, and she just released a collection, her very first one, and I was like, oh, I feel like I know her, I want to support her and buy her yarn. So I bought a skein of her yarn in the In the Garden colorway, and I knit a shawl out of it. And I just love that shawl, and to this day, it's one of my favorite ones, because it was my very first skein of indie dyed yarn, and my very first real knitting project. So I will show you. So this is what it looks like. It's just a beautiful one stain shawl. And at the time I was a super tight knitter. And like I said, I didn't really understand what gauge was <laughs> or how it mattered to have a needle, like the right needle. So this one I knit on a size five needle and it was it called for a size six. So even, I, I like to knit them now on a size five, but this is still really tight. So I don't know what I did. I was probably just a super tight knitter, but, um, whoops, <laughs> I hope you can see that, but it's just a really pretty color, and I love this color pink, it's so pretty, so yeah, this was the very first real thing I did, and it was really funny because I, that was my very first skein of any dyed yarn, like I said, and I even kept the yarn ties, <laughs> like the, the ties you have to cut, so it's just like scraps of yarn, and I think I still have that somewhere. <laughs> And I kept the yarn tag and I just kept all of it. It was just so amazing. And then the very second thing that I knit, I decided I've knit a shawl and I've knit a hat. Now it's time for a sweater. <laughs> and I didn't pick just like a flax light or something that would be easy. I wanted something that would really challenge me and something that I would really learn a ton of knitting skills off of. So at the time I was also watching another podcast called Fruity Knitting. And I don't really watch that that much anymore just because I sort of run out of time. But it was, it's very intuitive. Definitely check it out. It's called Fruity Knitting. And it's a, it's a couple that do it. And they're just amazing. I mean, she is just such a talented knitter. She knit like one sweater I remember when I was still watching was it had like five motifs on it on the yoke. 
and it was in Tarsia, and it had like 20 different colors per, per like rose, rose that was on it. It was like five different roses. So she just had tons of strands hanging down. I was like, whoa. <laughs> so she was an amazing knitter. And one of the sweaters she was working on was called Daffodils by Murray Woolen. I will put a picture up here of um, what, where, what the book looks like and what the pattern looked like. And so here's what my finished sweater looks like. I hope you can see that. So, as you can see, it has just a lot of different cables on it. It's just, so I followed like, I think there was like five different charts on it. And it was, <laughs> I definitely got my challenge. Um, but the thing is, I don't wear this at all because I used the recommended yarn and it was a Rowan, Rowan yarn. And it was just so, so scratchy. <laughs> I just can't deal with it. It's just like too much, but I wear it every once in a while and then I remember how scratchy it is and I don't wear it for a long time after that. But um, it was like 50% wool and like 50% um, nylon bicoast blend, I think. So, but I loved that it was seamed. That was, and I learned how to seam <laughs> on this sweater and it's just really funny because I was like, oh, I, I know how to do that. I don't need to look up mattress stitch. I, I'll just whip stitch it. So that was what I did. <laughs> I just whip stitches so the seams are like three quarters of an inch on this thing. I mean, it's big seams, but you can't tell when you're wearing it, but it's just funny how I was like, I don't need to learn mattress stitch. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then the, it was pretty, it was pretty simple. Like I didn't make a ton of mistakes on the lace or on the um, smaller cables because you were doing the same thing over and over. But on this section of cables, that one, this one right here, as you can see, um, they are constantly changing so like one time all the cables will be facing this way and then this way and it kind of just zigzags and so I was constantly making mistakes and then eventually I learned instead of ripping the whole thing back I could just rip back that section and then just re-knit that section with like a crochet hook and just try to pick up the stitches and do all that which <laughs> wasn't fun but I did it and I got it done and I'm really proud of myself for pushing through because it took me like a whole year of to knit this and it was the only thing I had on my needles because at the time I was very a very monogamous knitter only knitting <laughs> one project to completion before I would cast on the next one so it was really funny but I was really glad to have it done but I actually was really just burnt out of sweaters and I didn't knit for a long time after that just because I I don't know it was it was fun to have the challenge but I feel like looking back I probably should have picked an easier one but I don't know I learned so much. I learned like how to knit two together. I learned how to make one right and how to do cable stitches and how to do lakes. I mean, I just learned so much. So it was just, it was really, really fun. And I still, I, I was really glad that I did it. So after I knit that, I took a break from knitting and then went back to crochet. And I decided that I wanted to make a, my own crochet pattern. So I crocheted a figurine, in a way, of my dog, Belle. <laughs> She's a little terrier, and I love her so much, and so I really wanted to make like a little stuffed animal that looks just like her. So uh, my mom took me to the yarn store, and I bought some um, Pima cotton that looked like her color hair. So, I will so this is what my um, stuffed animal looks like. Here she is. <laughs> So I, it's like a pretty good size as you can see, like, I'll hold it back here a bit. It just has such a fuzzy tail and I put a pipe cleaner in it. <laughs> and I have, and I sewed some, hang on, she is not looking right, there we go. So I have a little collar, one of old Belle's old collars here, and then I just uh, whip stitched some black yarn around her eyes. And then I took a wire brush to it to make it look fuzzy. As you can kind of see, she Belle looks like she has eyeliner around her eyes. She has like a black strip. And then I just used, I took a wire brush to her whole body. Um, so that way, make it look a little bit more like fur. So it fuzzed up a bit, but um, the ears really fuzzed up, which I was really happy about. So yeah, this is... This is the very first thing that I made up my own pattern and I still have it written down somewhere. <laughs> but crocheting I feel like is, is fairly easy to write your own pattern because you don't need to like plan ahead. If you just wanna increase here or do something here, you just kind of just do it. So I don't know, I've heard a lot of people think the same way, saying that crochet does seem easier than knitting to, uh, 
to play around with. So I really had fun with this and I have the pattern written down somewhere. <laughs> I don't know why. I think it was just part of the list maker in me saying, I need to record this, <laughs> which I'm glad I did. I might do something with it later. I wanted to um, make a tiny one because this one has three or four strands held together. So I was like, if I just make one, it'd be like a quarter of the size. So I don't know, we'll see, who knows, <laughs> probably won't do it, but you know. Okay, so after I, I made the, I made Belle, I made my little figurine Belle, then I decided I was ready to knit again. And I wanted to knit something fairly simple, but um, something that was um, a really cool thing to knit. So I watched, since I was watching all these podcasts, um, there were some of them that were making Cozy Memories Blanket. And so it's basically a square that you knit and it is just has a very special memory to it or it's something from a leftover project or just random minis that you have like a friend can gift you or something like that. And so I thought that was such a neat idea and I wasn't, I was fine with it being on the needles for like years and years. I just thought it looked fun to make and it would just be very special because when something's on your needles for that long, it just becomes more special. So I will show you what it looks like. So here it is. So I think you can see the end. So it's a it's a fairly good size. I feel like it's pretty long. Um, and all of these squares, the majority of them, I would say like 95% are all dyed with icing dyes. So that is how I started out dyeing yarn. So one year I really was really excited to dye yarn because I saw on my podcast someone was dyeing yarn with icing dyes. And I thought that would be super cool. So I bought some undyed minis and just had e every member of my family dye a mini skein so that that would be their square in my blanket. <laughs> and so everyone that was really special to me in my family has dyed a square in this blanket. So I will show you everyone's square. <laughs> So I started out just doing a bunch of spring squares, and those didn't have, really have any meaning. But this is my dad's square, and this is my mom's, my sister Caroline's, and then I put a square in here. It's the only one that's striped in here, just to be different, I don't know. And then this one I dyed um, because I wanted my great-grandma, like, a memory of her in my blanket. So I put that in, and also my great-grandpa after their favorite colors. I asked mom what their favorite colors were and she said like a cranberry color for her and like blues for him. So that was what I did. And then this one is my um, Aunt Eloise who I just love to death. And this is my grandma and my grandpa and then um, another aunt, my Aunt Becky. So that was really fun to have everyone dye square in their blanket and that and this seam right here is going to be my middle section so I'm doing them all one direction and then I'm going to pick up here and then knit the other direction so it will kind of have like a seam down the middle and then they will be um, symmetrical on both sides so I figured that would be really cool so then that way that will be like the center spine and then I'm going to do my very first advent when I dye one up for this year for my yarn business then that will be right next to it. So I thought that would just be so cool. So I wanted to make this extremely special and um, and yeah, it just, it, it, it's very special to me. So I love all the colors that I chose. It's funny because like a couple years ago, I was like, I don't really like yellow. So I don't know why I knit with so much yellow. So it was really funny because I have a lot of yellow in this, fir in this first section, as you can see. But now I'm getting to like yellow more and I pulled it out this winter and I was like, oh, I love this so much. I can't believe I ever liked it. So um, it's obviously not finished because it's only, um, it's not very wide yet. So I'm hoping it can be like double the width just to have a lap blanket. And then you know what? I'm going to start another one <laughs> because it's fun to have on the needles. And it's just, um, it's just a really fun project because it feels like each square is a finished object and you get to move on to a different color. So I highly recommend the pattern. It just is an amazing idea to me and it's just really cool. So I'm sure as I put in a couple squares, I will show it again. But I wanted to mention that since this is dyed with icing dyes, I went through um, like a phase at once. I guess you'd call it a phase, I don't really know. But I, w I was really nervous that all of these dyes would run and that they would fade and it would just eventually become like pastel colors. So, so what I did is I, I was watching um, some of my podcasts and a lady mentioned how to avoid your yarns from running in the water. How to avoid like um, having colored water as you're washing it. 
I forget what that's called at the moment. I know it. <laughs> Brain freeze. So, um, anyway, so to avoid that, you have to get the pH of your water down to either a 4 or a 5. And I just put in a tablespoon of citric acid per every gallon of water that I use to wash this. And that just keeps my pH down for the pH that I that my water is normally. So that just really works for me. And so my dye never runs um, when I am washing this blanket. And I just keep it out of direct sunlight. Um, and it's just, and the colors, this is probably two years old. Um, two years ago is when I started this, so it's about two years old. And the colors look exactly the same as they did. So I really am not going to worry about that anymore because I feel like I found a way to keep it, keep it looking like this for forever. So I'm really excited about that. So um, the only colorways in here that are um, not, um, not dyed with icing dyes that I bought from um, other yarn dyers. This one is Molly from a homespun house. Her, um, this was a mini set she did last year. I think it was last year. And um, so these are a lot of her Christmas colorways, these five. And I just love them so much. And then I have some Yarn Cafe creations in here. I have, so like these five are all hers. So we have, this was a fall mini set. We have one, two, three, four, and then five. So I think that was all of the um, all of the indie dye yarns in here. Besides, my very first square that I did <laughs> was um, the same color that I used on my very first shawl. And it's funny because this square, I knit it and it was and it was fine. Like I mean, it looked good. And then I ripped it back out because I wanted to keep knitting with that yarn. <laughs> so that just should tell you how much I loved it. So that was all of my knitting projects, and then I just have always been knitting, and I've always really enjoyed it. So when I was 12 and 13, I can't remember how old, but around that age, I learned how to spin. And how I learned how to spin was we went to um, St. Genevieve, Missouri, which is just um, a really quaint old town, and they have like a lot of historical tours going on. And so everyone there was dressed up in like us uh, and clothes of like that time period. So it was really cool. So they were all sitting there um, spinning yarn and stuff. And I was like, Mom, let's go over there. Let's see what they're, let's see how they're doing that. So I just thought it was the coolest thing ever, how they were taking like wool roving and making yarn. And I was like, I want to make yarn. <laughs> so I'm sure I bugged them so much asking them questions. But they were really nice and they answered all my questions. And then, um, and then I ended up going back there for my 13th birthday because my mom said when I turned 13 that I could um, go anywhere I wanted to for my birthday. It's like a overnight trip. And so I was like, I want to go to St. Genevieve and learn how to spin. <laughs> so that was what we did. And my very first yarn was really thick yarn because for some reason I had it in my head that I am not, I'm not going to be able to knit spin yarn. I had It has to be like <laughs> bulky weight. I don't know why because I knit like... That really fine sweater so I don't really know what I was thinking but anyway she was she was super nice and I'm sure she was like why are you spinning it so thick because it was it was really thick but I ended up core plying it which is basically you have a one ply yarn of like um, a really thick weight and then you ply it with a um, strand of like thread or something something very thin so it gives it a really cool look so I really like that um, and, but after that I took I ended up buying a wheel and that's the wheel that I still have. I have an Ashford traditional wheel and I love it so much. It's just like a very classic spinning wheel and it just it's really fun. But like I only like to spin once a year. <laughs> it's like I love to get it out in the springtime so I could just take it out like on my front porch and just be spinning and just hear the birds sing. So it's just a really fun thing to do in the spring. And then I spin every spare minute I get in the spring and then I put it away. And it's just a really fun thing to do every year. I just feel like it's really fun. So I will show you the spinning project that I have going. So I, whenever I spin yarn, I spin um, like about a skein of like sport weight. And then I will just knit it up into like little um, swatches. And then I'm going to just take those swatches and end up one day, hopefully I'll have enough, like when I'm 80 years old. <laughs> And then I will hopefully have enough to make a blanket out of it. So I have probably 15 squares already and I brought a couple to show you. So here is my um, a skein of yarn that I have uh, spun that I haven't caked up and knit with yet. So I just thought I would show you. I know it's not perfect, but I feel like it's really, it's really, um, it's still really beautiful. So here it is close up. It's not really wound up very tightly, but yeah, it's so soft. I bought some really nice yarn off of Etsy. Um, 
And then I also, some of these, so I will show you some of the squares. So this is a square that I have knit. And it just is so pretty. I love how it sort of striped itself. And then this one, I dyed the yarn. I dyed the wool roving and then I spun it up. This is dyed with um, an Easter egg coloring kit, actually. And then this one is dyed with Wilton icing dyes. And I love this one. <laughs> I just love how vivid colors look when they are spun. It's just so, so pretty. And then this one, I probably have 10 squares <laughs> of this because um, this was the very first one that I spun and then I just wanted to keep knitting and keep knitting. So I have quite a few of these. And so this is a, um, a wool and silk and alpaca blend, I think. So it is just super soft. And I love all the silk in it because it gives it like a white shine. It's so pretty. Plus, so those are just some that I have, um, that I have just lying around and stuff. So it was just really, really, um, really fun to spin. And I just love spinning and I just do it, um, like I said, pretty much once a year. So I'm sure you will be seeing that again as it's almost spring and I will probably be pulling out my wheel and spinning like a crazy person. <laughs> okay, so now we are on to needle felting. That is the next thing I picked up. So the very first, the very first thing I needle felted, I'm really sure what they were, but I just started out simple. And then I made a lot of animals. I needle felted animals, so I made like a wire armature and then I made, um, and then you would just wrap pipe cleaners around it and then you would just um, twist the wool onto it. So there are great videos out there at Serafina Fiber Arts and she just has any animal you can imagine and there she just does great tutorials. That's how I learned and I will put a picture in while I was talking about that. You should have already seen it and it is a picture of a sheep that I gave to my dad for Christmas one year and that is the only animal that I saved that I didn't sell. So a couple months ago, for the Christmas season, I wanted to needle felt myself a picture of a snowflake that I could hang up in my room year round because I am a winter girl through and through. <laughs> winter is my favorite season. I live for winter. I just love, love everything about winter. So here's a picture that I needle felted. Okay, can you see that? Yes. So uh, it's just a beautiful snowflake picture, and as you can see, it's a pretty good size. Um, I did this with my friend, and we had so much fun. <laughs> so that was just, it's just so much fun. You, I tell people that don't know what it is, like it's like painting with wool, or sculpting with wool. It is the funnest thing to do. And I've also, and then when I was 13, I also wanted to learn how to sew. So for my 13th birthday, I got a sewing machine because that was what I wanted. And I started sewing project bags. So like this one, I sewed this one and I sewed the one behind it and the other ones um, I purchased um, somewhere. But eventually I've had a lot of comments on where I got my project bags. I will like hopefully next episode show you where I got them all. But I don't think we will have time this episode, but stay tuned and I will show you. <laughs> but I have a lot more bags that I've sewn um, in my closet. <laughs> But I also sold quite a few too. So I mean, I've just, I, it was, I liked sewing, but I wouldn't say I love it because I don't feel like it's a creative outlet for me. It was more of just like, I don't feel like there's a lot of things you can do with it. I know, I know a lot of you find inspiration from it and that's great. I wish I did, <laughs> but like, I mean, I like sewing. It's just, I feel like it's not as creative as like dyeing yarn or knitting or something where you can put different colors together to make different fabrics or something. Whereas these, like the fabric would come like how it's gonna look and you just cut it out, which I mean is creative, but it just didn't feel like that to me. So I don't really like to do it as much, but I love the finished product of sewing. And a thing that I picked up last year for like, I'd like to pick up a new craft, a new hobby every year. And so the one that I picked up a couple years ago was painting. So my friend Sage is an amazing painter. She just paints like for her job and she is an amazing painter. And she, um, so she was giving me lessons um, and we just kind of had fun. It was sort of like a hangout day once a week that I would just go and we would both paint. So I will put a picture in here of what my second painting was. So again, me, crazy me, <laughs> wanting to be, a ch having, wanting to have a challenge of the thing that I um, 
a, a painting. I wanted it to be a real challenge. So I did a smaller painting of um, like a field and stuff and it was it was fairly easy. And so after I did that, I told Sage that I wanted to paint something that was three foot by two foot, <laughs> which is huge. But I feel like it turned out really good. So the three foot by two foot one is the one that I put a picture in because it's the one that I'm the most proud of and the one that I had the most fun on. And it just, it's again a winter scene because I'm a winter girl <laughs> and I love winter. So yeah, I just thought I would show you. So I know that's been really long. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I just had so many comments on it. And I know I really enjoy hearing other people's stories of how they learned and what their fiber story has been. And so I just hope you enjoy mine. <laughs> so wow, I feel like that was really long winded. <laughs> so now we are going to be getting into the knitting content. So I actually have a finished object this week. Can you believe it? <laughs> it's actually, I finished it a couple weeks ago, but I didn't seam it up. So it is the Shift Cal by Andrea Mowry. And it is so pretty and I love it so much. So here it is. It is some yarn that I got at Rhinebeck because yes, I was blessed enough to go to Rhinebeck this year because I have the most amazing parents. <laughs> And let me tell you what, it was unbelievable. I went to Rhinebeck, New York and Needles Up and it was amazing. I got to meet so many people that I've been following on the internet for a long time and I also got to hang out with some people that I absolutely adore. So it was so much fun and it was such an amazing time. So this was some of the yarn that I got at Rhinebeck. This was the only purchase that I made because I wanted to have something to remember the trip by. So this is what it is and I love it so much. So I will put it on for you. I will talk about this shawl afterwards. <laughs> so it is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. And this was the very first cow that I ever knit. And it was a lot of fun. I knit it really quick. I knit it in like um, probably five days. So that was pretty quick. And I didn't have a lot of knitting time. It was just after school and I'm um, in the evenings. So yeah, it's just, a been, it's just a really fun, fun pattern. And yeah, I really love it. So I definitely recommend it. It's so warm and it's just, it was knit in Primrose yarn in their Homestead base, in their Bramble colorway, along with Dreams and Memory in Retrograde, Mer Mercury in Retrograde. <laughs> and so that was really beautiful colors and I loved it so much and it was such a fun knit like I already said so yeah I just had to weave in all of my ends which I felt like there were a lot of ends and I had to seam it up the side so it, it probably took me about an hour maybe but it was finished and now I can finally wear it so I felt like that counts as a finished object and I haven't even shown it on my podcast so that was something that I finished okay so the shawl that I was wearing is the Birds of a Feather Shawl, again by Andrea Mowry. <laughs> I love her so much. All of her designs are so pretty. So here it is. It is so long. <laughs> and I love it. So the yarn that I used was um, some of my own hand dyed yarn um, with icing dyes. So it wasn't with acid dyes yet. I, this, this has been a couple years old. And then this is... Um, some Legacy Fiber Arts mohair along with a lace weight Malabrigo yarn. So I don't remember the colorway names. Like I said, it's been a couple years ago, so I don't remember. But it's actually pretty hot in here, so I'm not going to put it back on. <laughs> okay, we are on to works in progress. So I haven't been having a ton of knitting time today because I've just been swamped with dyeing yarn every few moment I get and just doing um, a lot of Etsy, Etsy work. So it's just been really busy, but I have been able to knit a little bit before bed every night. And I love that time to just unwind and just knit and do something that's very meditative. So I really have been enjoying it. So I am knitting my pattern, which is called what I have decided to name it, Into the Bloom. Well, I've decided I will sh I will talk about my pattern after this. I should probably show my progress before I start talking about it. So um, here it is. I am knitting it in my Head in the Clouds colorway. You can find this in my Etsy shop. So here it is. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell if you're seeing this, so I think you will be able to. 
And then this progress keeper I have is one from Simply Serving on Etsy. I follow her on Instagram and she makes the best progress keepers. I really love her, all of her work. She's a really talented artist. So I've got quite a bit done, I feel like. I've only had this cast on um, for a couple of days. So I mean, it goes really fast because it's only a one skein cowl that I have designed, like I've already said. And here is it in the cake. So it just has some really pretty um, like pinks and purples and a little bit of oranges. So I just really love this colorway. So I will show you what the finished product of my cowl will look like. As I have said, it is called Into the Bloom. And this is what it looks like. I'm really stretching it out. Let me see. Let me, let me show you this the right way. <laughs> I guess I can go ahead and put it on. So um, this is using my Frank Sinatra mini set. And there are only four left in the shop, I think. So there's, it might be sold out by the time you see this, but I am going to be dying more. Do not worry, I am going to be dying up more, hopefully. Um, in a couple of weeks, I think I'm pretty, my dye schedule is pretty full right now, but I'm hoping in two weeks I will dye this and then it might take a week for processing so it's coming I'm hoping that it will um, I will have all these mini sets ready for when my pattern is released so it's just a really nice cow pattern because I've, I've always I've always been on the search for a cow that um, that sort of increases so you can see all of the, all of the minis very well and you can see like a like a skein of yarn and you won't have to constantly adjust it like you would a one skein shawl so i really like this so it's just a really pretty um just a really pretty pattern and i and i really love it it was so much fun to knit and this was using um 10 10 gram mini skeins and you can also use a 100 gram skein of yarn if you would not like to use minis so yeah, I just love the yarn so much. This was the favorite, my favorite thing that I've ever dyed was this mini set. And it was one of the first things that I dyed. So I'm hoping that that pattern will be, um, I'm almost finished um, writing it up and I'm going to put some watercolor in it. I'm going to be doing a little bit of watercolor, like, like I'm hoping to put a flower in there and like just some other fun um, design details. So I'm hoping that I will get that finished this week and then my tech editor needs to look at it and then I'm going to be needing test knitters. So I'm so excited. So if you're interested in test knitting, then I will put a Instagram post up in a couple of days or whenever I'm ready for them. And then you can message me there. So I am so excited about this and I hope you guys will love knitting it and have as much fun knitting it as I did. Well, yeah, I think that was all of the knitting I was going to talk to you about. So next up is talking about everything that I have in my shop and all the colorways that are available. And then I'm going to talk about some dream knitting. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. So I have just been having so much fun dyeing yarn lately. It has just been so amazing because I finally feel like I can, I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> like before I was just like, always just really frustrated with myself because they weren't turning out the way that I wanted and I couldn't figure out how to get it that way because there's not a lot of information out there. So now I feel like I really know my dyes, know what my colors look like and like I have a technique down which has just made dyeing yarn so enjoyable and so much more fun. I just am like loving it now. <laughs> so it's just really, really fun. So I would like to start out by saying if there is a colorway that you see on my podcast that you don't find in my shop or it's not available or you have any questions at all, do not hesitate to message me on Instagram. This is my name on Instagram. Or you can always message me on Etsy too and I would be happy to answer your questions and especially if you can't find a yarn that you're looking for, sometimes they will just sell out and then I haven't had a chance to dye them. So that's sometimes the case or I just don't know what's popular, so I don't know what to dye because I have so many things going on and so many yarns that I wanna dye. So if there's a colorway that you want, then don't, don't hesitate to message me because that helps me get an idea of what colorways you guys want and what will be popular and what I should be dyeing. So it really, it's really good to have all that positive feedback and to just have um, feedback to know what you guys want. Also, if you would like a different base or a different quantity or sweaters quantity or anything like that, again, just message me and I will set you up with a custom listing. So it has been really crazy that there are like these four colorways that everyone is loving. <laughs> so I would never have thought that, but you know, like what do I know? <laughs> 
So the colorways that are really selling is my, um, and the colorways that you guys really love is my lilac colorway along with evening skies. And I definitely, I love that combo. And then also the combo of comfort and party dress, which of course it's pink, so I love it. <laughs> so I will put a picture here. You should have already seen a picture of me while I was talking about it. So it's just a really beautiful yarn and I am so excited that, um, that I recorded all those colorways because at the beginning I didn't think they would be that popular. So you just never know, do you? <laughs> so that was just so, so cool. So I have probably dyed 10 new colorways that are on the drying racks and I've also dyed a ton of new colorways that I'm going to be showing you today. So within the next month, there's gonna be just tons of colorways, tons of just a completely full shop, which I am just so excited about. So just thank you guys for all of the orders you have been placing. They just make my day. And I am just so excited that you guys love my yarn well enough to like to buy it and to spend your money on it. It just really is just so touching. I just love it so much. So just thank you guys so much. Um, it's just so amazing. And I just can't believe it's happening. <laughs> it's just all happening so fast. And it's just so, so cool. And I would also like to mention that I have been getting a lot of questions asking about my Harry Potter mini sets along with my Little Women mini sets that you guys can't find them in the shop. That is because they have sold out. My Harry Potter mini sets were just one of a kind and I only dyed like 15 of them and so once they were gone, they were gone. I'm really sorry about that. And um, But I have exciting news that I'm going to be dyeing up five more mini sets of completely different colorways and I'm hoping that I will get a really good selection for all the different types of um, people that love different colors so I'm really hoping I will have a really good selection so maybe we'll see that next time if I can get around to it or um, maybe the next podcast after that so definitely by the next podcast after that, that'll give me plenty of time so I'm really excited about that and my little women mini sets were I, I did record them but I don't know if there's enough people that want them left for me to do another round so if you still want a little women mini set then you can definitely message me on Etsy and I will just count them all up and see if I have enough to do another round or something or just see how, how big the interest is. Like I said, that really helps me to decide what, what I should be doing. Okay, so let's get into talking about all of my, all the different colorways that I brought up to show you. My room <laughs> looks like a mess. It is just covered in yarn, but you know what? That's really fun to have it that way. Sometimes I just do that just for fun. <laughs> So I've been having a lot of fun dyeing one-of-a-kind colorways. I just feel like it is a great palette cleanser and just something that's that I can just go in and dye and not have to bother recording it and it's just really, really fun to do it that way. So the next, the first colorways that I'm going to show you are one-of-a-kind so I will never dye them again and there's only like two available of each. They are. So this, this colorway I have named um, Raspberry Bush. It is just a really pretty, um, just pink. It's just like probably my second favorite color of pink. It just has a lot of beautiful speckles on it. So I really love this colorway. And then I dyed one of these that were lighter. So I still have it named Rosebud Bush because it's just, I mean Rosebud Bush, Raspberry Bush. <laughs> and it's just a little bit darker, but as you can see, they're pretty similar. Um, this one has a little bit more different color speckles in it. So they are two separate listings. I will show you this one because it's showing all of the speckles. So it's just super cool. So I love that. And then another one of a kind that I have dyed is my Toolbox colorway. It is just a really pretty um, brownish yellow that's just a really pretty like tan. I really love it. So it just has a lot of different colored speckles in it and there are only two of these available. And you know what? I think this would be an amazing combo if you put my toolbox colorway along with my ras uh, raspberry bush colorway. Isn't that just so pretty? I just feel like I love them so much. It would be such a cool like pop, like an accent color to go along with this. And then I also dyed a colorway called Butter Mellow. It is just a very beautiful, vibrant yellow with just a lot of fun color speckles in there. And it's really funny because I'm completely not a yellow person, like I've said. Like it's just one of those colorways that's just colors that are just really hard that just like there's certain types that I really love. So I thought I need to bring a yellow to the shop and you guys have really been loving it. So that makes me so happy that you guys love yellow because I'm gonna get there one day guys. <laughs> I'm gonna get there and I'm gonna love yellow at some point. So this is a Harry Potter colorway that is 
a scene that I really love in the books and in the movies just because it's where Harry, Ron, and Hermione all met and it's just so special because that's where it all started. <laughs> and then we have my Lagoon colorway. It is just a really beautiful um, green base with some purple and blues and it's like some yellow and brown speckles. You can just see it's just a lot of, a lot of pretty colors. You can see a little bit of brown there. So yeah. I love that colorway. So there is only one of these available and then like I said I will just see what colorways are popular and then I will just be dying up more of those. So it's really good because one day I was just like had so much inspiration and I'm like I'm ready to dye all these new colorways and then it's going to be good because then I can just have them all written down and I can just go in and just dye everything that I have written down because it's a lot easier to just do it that way. I kind of have a day of completely new colorways and then dyeing up all my old ones which I love them both equally. <laughs> And then I have my In Bloom colorway. And it's just a really pretty pink. And I was looking at this, and this is a lot like the very first shawl that I knit, the colorway I used with that. It's so funny how I, I guess I just loved it that much, and I just, like, came up with a colorway that was similar. It's just, like, in my mind somehow. I don't know. It's really funny. So the, this has, um... I wanted a colorway that was, like, reminded me of spring and, like, the flowers blooming with... It has a little bit of, um green speckles in here and some yellow ones along with like some bright um, fuchsia speckles so I just love it so much and then I have a skein of my head in the clouds colorway this is the uh, colorway that I'm knitting my cowl out of and it just has some like bright purple in there some blues some um, orange like I said like some rust color um, yeah, just tons of different colors, and it also has a little bit of white for the clouds. <laughs> I don't know. Just because I wanted to start dyeing some with a little bit more white. So the colorways that you will see next time that are brand new has some white in it, and I'm really stoked about them. And then I have a couple of old colorways in the shop that are probably not going to be coming back after these sell out, just because they were some of the very first ones that I dyed, and I don't know. I just, I feel like I just need to move on. <laughs> so this is my Time Turner colorway. And it just, this is probably one of my favorite color blues. This and like an ice blue. So I love it so much. It's also a Harry Potter colorway. And there are one of these in the shop. And then I have my sugar cookie colorway. It is just a really pretty um, light green with like a light blue and then just this pretty tan. So this was um, a Christmas, part of my Christmas collection and there are one of these available. But I feel like cookies are like all winter long. That's when my family makes a lot of cookies. And then I have a skein of my corduroy on my mohair base. And this one turned out a little bit more um, variegated than usual. But I'm still calling it corduroy because, um, yeah, because it's very similar to the actual corduroy colorways. There's one of these available. And I also have tons of mohair available that I have to order in all of my um, in all of my colorways in my tonal colorways. So you can just go and check that out. If there, I love mohair for holding along um, a strand of fingering weight and mohair for like shawls and sweaters. It just gives it such a beautiful fabric and it's extremely warm. It just makes it like probably twice as warm as any as if I just used a strand of wool. So it just is amazing. I love it so much, and I pretty much hold it with everything. <laughs> And then here is my confetti colorway. It is just a really pretty, like, mauve pink. It's just, and then it has, like, a lot of, like, has some bright pink, some blue, some green, some yellow, some red. Well, not really red. It's more of just, like, a dark, dark pink. So I really love this colorway. It was a one of a kind, and there's only one left. So once this is gone, I will never dye it up again. Okay, so... Now, I, now I'm going to talk about a sweater's quantity worth of yarn that I have in the shop. So if you would have watched my um, last episode, then you would have heard how I was um, having a dilemma with the pattern that I wanted to knit and this cardigan that I wanted to knit with this um, DK weight yarn that was almost more of a, um, it was like a light DK where she calls for almost a worsted in her pattern. So it is the All of the Lights cardigan by Hohi Locatelli. And I'm still going to knit it, but I just decided to purchase a worsted base instead of a DK, DK base. So it is going to be, it's only like a seven yard difference from the yarn that she calls for. And then that way I can be sure to get gauge and to have the right needles. And that way it will be guaranteed to fit. 
since um, I will be taking measurements. So then that's just going to be so much less of a headache. <laughs> so thank you for all of the people that responded, giving me pointers, giving me ideas. Thank you so much. And I saved all of them in case I ever come across this problem again and I need some guidance. So that was great. So thank you for that. So here it is. I am still going to be using my Butterfly Kisses colorway. It is just a really beautiful, this in my opinion is the perfect pink. <laughs> it took me like seven tries to get it right, but I'm so happy that I kept persevering and finally got the right color. So it is just a really soft pink along with, um, it has like some really pretty speckles in it, but I wanted, but it doesn't have a ton of speckles because I wanted this to be like a very classic colorway, perfect for a sweater that will be timeless. So that's what I'm going for. So here they are. So I have, um, all of these are in the shop right now. Um, it is just enough to make a sweater, but I have it, into, obviously I have it um, available as just people can buy just a single skein. Um, but if you want to knit a sweater with this yarn and there's not enough in the shop, like I said, then message me and I can set you up with a custom listing. But this yarn, you guys, this base is my DK base and it is unbelievably soft. Like, and it's an eight ply, which I love. It's I love that it's an eight ply. It is just like completely bouncy. I mean, it is just like twice as much bounce as a four, four ply, which makes sense, I guess. But I just love it so much, and it is definitely my favorite DK base that I've ever felt. So I love this base so much. Um, it's just very soft, and it takes speckles like 3D. Like it just goes around the whole yarn. It is so, so cool. So I really love speckling this base. And like I said, it is just the softest base. So it is actually in the worsted yarn that I am using to, um, to knit my sweater is going to be an eight ply worsted base. That is 100% superwash merino, just like this one. So I'm so excited. So it's going to have that same bounce and it's just a little bit thicker, which I love. So I'm super happy about it. And now I feel like I can just breathe and just do a gauge swatch and it should all just work out and be fine. So I'm really excited about that. Okay, so another thing I have in the shop, so you guys have been loving my mini sets and I'm so excited about that because I have sold out, like I said, of pretty much all of the minis that I had available. So I'm, like I said, I'm going to be dying up five more, five more completely different beautiful mini set. So I'm so excited about that, but I actually have one more in the shop. This is a set of seven 20 gram mini skeins. So it is perfect to make fingerless mitts or socks or a shawl or anything like that. And if you need pattern suggestions for <laughs> pattern suggestions for any of my yarn or for any of these mini sets, then don't hesitate to ask me. I have a couple um, that are just great for beginners or just anything. I just feel like they're beautiful patterns that I have knit a couple of them and a couple of them are in my queue. So I really love them and I just think they're beautiful patterns. So this is my potions mini thing, mini, mini set. <laughs> so it is just a set of seven and they are named after all of the potions and Harry Potter and I love them. Not all of them, I mean there's tons of them, but some of the ones that I love the most. And so there's a couple of these left in the shop and I am so excited about these. I had so much fun dyeing them. They're like really pretty spring colors that are bright and fun. So I really loved these. So here are some, I will put a picture in here of, um, while I was talking about it, you should have already seen a picture of what they look like faded because I've arranged some, some of these are faded and some of these are, um, not faded. <laughs> so I have some exciting news. So a lot of you guys have been asking me if I have a gold Stellina base or a worsted base or a Surrey alpaca base um, and silk. So I am excited to say that I now have a DK weight, worsted weight, Surrey alpaca silk blend base, as well as a gold Stellina base. So those should all be coming to my shop pretty soon, as soon as I can dye the yarn and it arrives and all of that fun stuff. So I'm so excited that you guys have been um, loving this. I, I've had a gold Stellina in the past, but it wasn't really popular, but um, I think it will be now. I'm just really excited about it because I love gold Stellina. It is just, in my opinion, way better than silver Stellina because it's just magical. It just, if it hits the light just right, you can just see it and it's just so pretty. So I love gold Stellina. And I also wanted to mention that if you follow me on Instagram, then you will be able, I have decided to do a shop tour every Wednesday. So on Wednesdays, I will give you a tour of my shop, my new colorways, um, what's on the drying rack. So it's just a really fun, fun thing that I do every week, just so you guys can see what my colorways look like up close. Um, Cause I know it's sort of hard to show, um, show this way, but I get a really close up 
close-up pictures of all of the um, colorways and the things that I'm thinking of doing, so I just thought I would mention that on Wednesdays I do shop tours in my stories. Okay guys, I've saved the best for last. <laughs> so what I have in the shop now is called my Season of Minis. And it is just going to be the funnest thing ever. So you guys have been loving them and I'm so excited. So it, what it is, is I'm going to be um, packaging up a 20 gram mini for every Saturday of the month. And I'm offering this February through May. So February, March, April, and May, you can buy an advent. And is what I would recommend is that you purchase each month separately because that way I can ship it to you in time for you to open. Because otherwise, if you purchase them all together, you will get it. The, I will ship it the very um, last week of April. So if you are not, if you want to open them when I suggest, then I definitely recommend purchasing a shipping label so I can, uh, buying them separately so I can ship them to you in time. So I actually will put a picture in here at some point of what my inspiration photos are. So what the photo collage is on the listing is what I'm going to be pulling all my colors for. So if you love the colors in the photos, then I would definitely recommend um, getting this. I will insert a video um, here at some point showing you February's inspiration, um, Febu the February card that I'm going to be putting in there, along with the colorway names and the packaging. So basically what it will look like, but I will not be giving away any of the colorways. They are in packaged up in their minis. At so it's basically what you will get when you receive this because I haven't dyed the yarn up yet and I am saving, I am going to wait and dye up the yarn on Thursday afternoon. So I'm going to be taking down the listing for February's advent Thursday morning. So that is the very last day you will be able to purchase these and then they will be gone. And these are just one of a kind things. I'm not gonna be offering them again. So if you like the video, if you like the way it looks, if you like the idea of having an advent for winter instead of just for Christmas, I personally have fell in love with the idea <laughs> And I just cannot wait for all of these months to come. I feel like it is just going to be the best thing ever. Because I have always wished like a dyer would do an advent for a certain month or something. That way you could just have part of the magic of Christmas can just live on. And I just love it so much. So I think that I'm going to have the funnest time dying dying these colorways because like I said, February is my month because I love winter. So I hope that I will capture the magic of winter and give it to you in advent so I'm so excited about that and it's so funny because every time one of them sells I'm like oh, I just sold another advent I'm so excited for you guys <laughs> I'm like I'm so excited to start dying these it's just going to be the funnest thing like when I sell an advent it makes me like twice as happy as when I sell anything else just because I feel like it's just going to be so amazing and I just cannot wait to see all of you guys opening it. So when you're opening them, definitely tag me on Instagram. I would just love to see and love to see that, see that you're enjoying them and just have so much fun with them. So I'm just really excited about that. So um, I'm going to be leaving up May's, May's listing until I have to dye it. So it's got about another month left. So um, yeah, I just am so excited about all these and I hope that everyone gets a February advent that wanted one. I think I have enough list listings in the shop for everyone and I'm just so excited and it's going to be really funny because I'm telling mom and dad um, and I'm just like, wow, I hope I have enough time to do all this and they're like, oh, well, we can help you. <laughs> they're just so sweet. So dad might like help me wind some of them and mom might do the packaging. I don't really know yet, but it's just great that I'm going to be having some help and it'll just be a lot of fun to do together. I think it'll just be a lot of fun. So thank you so much to everyone who purchased an advent. They just, like I said, it just makes my day. So just thank you so much. So I think that is all I wanted to talk about. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. I know it was really long. I hope that's okay, <laughs> but I just had a lot of questions and I hope I covered everything. Um, I'm just I'm just so filled with gratitude right now and I just thank you so much for making it all possible and I really am just so excited to continue doing this and if you have any other questions you can put them in the comments and I will try to answer them on the next video so just thank you so much I hope you have a lovely day and a lovely rest of your week bye